Recently on my Instagram, I shared a powerful yet simple feature in Ableton Live and was surprised by how few people seem to know about it. I wanted to share it here on YouTube for those that don't use Instagram because I didn't want anyone to miss out. And I'll also show you how to do the same thing in FL Studio if that interests you. So let's get right into it. It's all focused on using the envelope follower, which is a stock tool built into Ableton Live. We're gonna use this to unlock some pretty interesting processing possibilities. Now there is an M4L version, but I'm gonna use the stock one in the audio effects modulator section. I always have my plugins sorted by rank. If you right click here, you can do that. It means the ones I use most often filter to the top. I find I'm often reaching for the same plugins. So this speeds things up a bit. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. If I load the envelope follower on this drum track, let's just solo in on those drums. You can see and hear that it's creating a live waveform based on the peak value of those drums. So where this becomes useful is that you can use this envelope to control any effect or parameter in Ableton, whether that is a stock effect or a third party plugin or anything on the mixer. All you have to do is hit map and then select the parameter. In this case, the gain of this EQ band, just for the sake of example, it's now going from minimum to maximum each time those drums hit. Now, of course, there's a lot more control than this. If you choose a minimum and maximum value, you can see that you can rein this effect in, make it more subtle, or even reverse it if you make the max value lower. Now, already you can probably think of dozens of different ways that this could come in handy, but just to go through a few more details, you can also map it to eight different parameters. So if I choose map and then another EQ band, you can see that we're both boosting and cutting at the same time based on what those drums are doing. Now, of course, this is a completely fabricated example. You wouldn't actually want to do precisely that on the drum bus, so I'm gonna clear those there. This time we're gonna map the envelope follower on the drums, go over to the bass channel, and we're gonna select the gain of this band here. If I play these two together, so you can see and hear that each time that kick hits, we're removing energy from the sub bass. This means that the kick is effectively carving out its own space in the mix without having to load up any compressors, do any side chaining, complicated routing, dialing in any attack, release, threshold ratio, or even having to listen for audible artifacts or issues. It's so simple and straightforward and uses almost no CPU power. Now I said I'd show you how to link this to third-party plugins. So if I open this up again, I'm just gonna pull an envelope follower onto the bass channel this time. Let's solo this in. So I'm gonna use the rise and fall just to smooth things out. And what I'm gonna do is now map this envelope follower to a different plugin on the drum channel. In this case, this one here. I'm gonna choose the mid amount. And what this means is that as the bass is swelling, the mid channel in the drums is gonna have a little bit more transient attack, which means they're gonna be carving out space as the arrangement again becomes more full. And if for some reason your third party plugin doesn't show the effects here, you can press configure. And if you just select one, it will show up in this list here. Some plugins, uh, especially EQ plugins, don't have these all loaded up because there would just be hundreds and hundreds of different ones there. So this is just a great way to bring more movement and life to your effects. Because sometimes when you set things static, they can start sounding a little bit boring. But also, say you have a really dense mix. You've got vocals, synths, pianos, guitars. While the vocal's singing, you could automate an EQ just to cut a tiny bit of treble, maybe just a dB from your guitars or your synths, just to carve out a little bit of space in this track. But this effect is not limited to just gain and EQ. That would be quite boring. You could use this on loads of different things. Say you've got a pad or, synth or synthesizers or strings. In fact, instead of talking about it, I'll just show you an example. So I just pulled up some strings here and I've automated the EQ and a bit of drive so that as things get louder, we just get a little bit more expression, a little bit more like emotion and passion out of those strings. So you can hear them just bite in just a little bit more as they get louder. Before I added that stuff, it just sounded a little bit flat and a little bit boring. So there's loads of different uh, places you could apply this sort of technique. I did say I'd show you how to do the same thing in FL Studio. This time we load the Fruity Peak controller, not the envelope follower. So I've got two guitar channels here, an acoustic guitar, and also this electric guitar track. And in this example, I'm gonna use the acoustic guitar to trigger an EQ cut on the electric guitars. So on the acoustic guitar track, I've loaded the Fruity Peak controller. And you'll need to adjust the bass and the volume. 
So you can see that it's starting to peak just like it was on the envelope controller. And we're just gonna leave the LFO section alone. Then on the electric guitar channel, we're gonna use this peak controller to make a slight cut in the treble while the acoustic guitar is strumming. So let's just choose channel five here. We've got to select link to controller, internal controller, and then select the peak controller on the acoustic guitar. So peak controller, peak. Now on the mapping formula, I'm gonna choose inverted because I want it to cut instead of boosting. And let's see what this does. You can see that we've got it cutting away each time. It's a little bit more fiddly than in Ableton, but in some ways it gives you a little bit more control. Let's hear those two together. And of course you'd want to spend a lot more time listening to this and fine tuning it, but I know there's lots of plugins that try to do this for you, that you can pay for, you know, that creates space between different tracks, but this method just uses so little CPU, it doesn't cost you anything, and it's just really simple. Often I see people creating very complex effects chains and routing and groups bussing, side chaining stuff to achieve quite simple results, and that's not really a criticism of complex and advanced processing chains. There's always a time and a place for that stuff. But if you're finding yourself making lots of clicks and adjustments on sort of mundane or tedious tasks, there's almost certainly a feature built into your DAW that automates that. We pay quite a lot of money for these softwares and we often forget that they've got all this, all these inbuilt plugins and features and tools to take care of all that boring stuff so that we can really just focus on the music, the mixes, masters, whatever it is you're doing in the software. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.